Today we're going to talk about what a white paper is. There's a number of reasons that this conversation is important, and the first is that white papers are an increasingly important part of the B2B sales process. So if your boss asks you to manage a white paper project, it's important to know what one is so you can actually can create one. We also need to understand where white papers fit alongside other pieces of content in the content uh, marketing roadmap. So knowing what a white paper is relative to other pieces of content is important so you can use each piece of content distinctly and in the best way to drive your sales and marketing goals. Finally, we need to know what a white paper is so that if you're hiring a freelancer or bringing in a writer to write a white paper, you can effectively guide the project. If we haven't met yet, my name is Charlie Walberger. I have worked with dozens of high growth tech startups, VC investors, and other innovative businesses to write white papers and other content projects to boost brands and improve sales and marketing efforts. Okay, so what is a white paper? Well, a white paper is an educational piece of content, namely for B2B audiences. It provides an in-depth exploration of an issue, an idea, or a problem and presents a solution. I like to call them an advanced problem solving guide because they're fact-based, they're not promotional, and they're often vendor agnostic. Vendor agnostic simply means that a white paper isn't specifically a sales-oriented uh, piece of content. You're not trying to tout the benefits of one vendor or one solution and really come across in a promotional way. You're explaining a wide variety of solutions or exploring a problem in a, in a broader way so that um, the, the entirety of the landscape can be seen and understood and a, a reader can draw their own conclusions. Of course, those conclusions are often going to be uh, beneficial to you, your product, or your service. Right now, the web is just an agenda-filled place. There's so much puff content, so much salesy content, and so little that's actually useful for readers. Now, a white paper is that breath of fresh air for a reader. It provides actual information that's fact-based, that's research-based, and really helps them draw a conclusion that they need uh, given the, the problem that's uh, in their business. See, people don't want more noise. They don't need more bite-sized content. Uh, there's enough kind of personal perspective pieces. We need something new. We need something uh, that, that helps them truly understand the problem uh, and truly understand the solution. A white paper doesn't have to be dry or academic. Actually, modern white papers are data-rich, they're well-designed, and they actually have a narrative or a, really a story that uh, is threaded throughout the white paper to help a reader understand what it is you're trying to share. Uh, one of the knocks on white papers today is that uh, people believe or, or mark, often marketers believe that audiences don't have attention spans anymore. And, and that can be true and that may be true except when it's not. And that's for those that have hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars in budget to spend and are looking for a product or service that's, uh, that's gonna fit. That is a significant decision, and that kind of decision requires the depth of content that a white paper can provide. A mentor of mine calls white papers the king of content, and he says that because they're effectively a one-stop shop. So you can provide background info that's really facts and figures based that, that shows benefits. You can use a white paper to explain a product or solution where you have a factual discussion of a real problem that's plaguing an industry or a business, and then you can cover the solution types and you can discuss what's optimal, the pros and cons of each, and give somebody a really well-rounded uh, view of the industry, the scenario, or the problem. So white papers uh, are not blogs. Now blogs are short and they're skimmable, they're highly personal viewpoints, uh, and they're not, they're not good for complex products or services to make those decisions, uh, or, to, or really to provide research around those decisions. They're also not case studies. Case studies are very qualitative. They're, they're kind of a, a, a polished up testimonial or a but don't take my word for it type piece of content. And those, uh, those really are designed to sell through the, uh, that qualitative experience of somebody else. White papers probably get most confused with ebooks. And ebooks is a little, ebooks are a little bit shorter. They're probably in the, about the four to five, six page range. And uh, those, those have less primary research. They're probably a little bit less rigorous, a little bit less qualitative data, uh, more secondary research uh, likely. And, and those are, again, gonna be somewhere between a blog and a white paper. They can be effective for the, the uh, uh, certain topics, 
but not for really the things that you, you are going to tackle with a white paper, something more complex, something more, uh, more significant, really. White papers matter for three key reasons. The first is for lead generation. The second is for prospect nurturing. And the third is for building that subject matter expertise or the industry credibility. I've worked with clients uh, across all these areas. And, and we find that as we get into a project that, uh, that naturally they have prospects at different funnel stages. So they have some prospects who are still in that awareness building stage and you can nurture leads, leads among this group. Other prospects are uh, at their research stage and they're trying to understand what matters as they start to move towards an important decision. And then there's uh, those uh, prospects in that um, compare and buying stage. And they've really built the context and built the, kind of the fundamental or foundational uh, knowledge they need and they're ready to make a purchase. But now they're kind of comparing vendors, options, services, or products. Each of these prospects needs different things. They're interested in different things and there's a bit of information that's going to allow them uh, to take that next step or to unlock that next step. So white papers, uh, when done effectively, are actually written at each of these stage and they can move prospects who are in one funnel stage to the next. And white papers will do this without, without you ever having to get on the phone with somebody. This piece of content can actually be that, uh, that delivery to take them from one stage to the next. Salespeople love this because it's one less call they have to make and, and yet when they do engage a prospect, they have them even closer to that buying decision. So we use white papers in a targeted way at a specific place in the funnel to move those prospects to the next stage. Uh, there's a great content marketing study out there that uh, surveyed uh, uh, B2B managers who are responsible for um, kind of product or, or uh, service decision making and buying. And they said that 82% that of them share uh, white papers with their colleagues. Another 65% said they're the most valuable piece of content for their B2B purchase. As I've mentioned, customers are skeptical of flashy and aggressive sales, but they are very, they are very open to solid, useful, kind of non-agenda or angle-filled content. Prospects that I have uh, engaged with, they, they really want to self-serve. They want a product or solution because they have a problem in their business and they need to find something or someone to help them solve it or achieve success. Uh, but they need that direction. They need clarity. They need uh, the right information and to understand an issue fully before they take next steps in the sales process. So that's what the white papers can do. White papers really are a marketer's secret weapon. Because as a, a prospect or a reader takes in the information and finds it valuable and useful, you start to build your brand. You might not be selling them something specifically at that moment, but when they're ready to make a decision, when they've thought through the options, when they've had kind of the full discussion and seen the full scope of information around a, pro a product or service or a problem, solution, an issue, who are they going to engage? They're going to engage that trustworthy source that helped bring them along the journey. You can be intrusive or you can be helpful. And I think most markers want to be helpful and white papers are a great way to deliver that. Finally, white papers are the gift that keeps on giving. I know, I know how it is. I write content. I work with marketers. It is hard to fill a content calendar. You've got blogs, you've got articles, eBooks, case studies, white papers. You're trying to put stuff out on social media. Well, white papers, because they're such a rigorous uh, and significant piece of content, they can be repurposed. So I love producing a white paper and then carving it up into blog posts or creating a one to two page sales slide or using it as kind of a script for a webinar or for social media content. Um, there's so many ways to use white paper beyond just the white paper itself. So be creative with the white paper. As you produce it, as you ask for that budget, as you manage that project, expect that you're gonna get more mileage out of the content than you would otherwise. So that's it for today. Uh, around white papers. If you have any questions, if you're stuck on a white paper project, if you're thinking about a white paper project, or uh, just need some, some, more, uh, some more ideas, tips, or help, uh, reach out to me on my website at www.charliew.co. I'd love to connect. Thanks.